Hi YouTube, I've sped this footage up a little bit, but it's just to give you a rough idea of the kind of habitat where I'm finding these Australian invasive flatworms. So this is a bit of woodland that's not too far away from where I live, and you can see loads of moss covering everything. There's leaf litter all over the place, and where I'm finding the flatworms is underneath logs, where it's pretty damp. I've only found three so far, but the fact that I found three means that there are probably a lot more in this area. We do get native flatworms, but um, they tend to be a lot smaller. They're usually brown or fairly dark in colour. These Australian ones are bright orange. So this is one here. Um, you can see just doing its typical kind of uh, stretching and contracting. So these things, they're quite hard to measure. You know, if somebody says, how long are they? It depends really because when they're all squashed up they're very short so they might only be like a couple of centimeters but when they're fully outstretched um, they're probably more like seven or eight centimeters something like that so I read that they like to eat earthworms and I really wanted to get a bit of footage of one eating an earthworm but uh, I haven't managed to so far this bit of footage you're seeing here you can see it seems interested in the worm and I was very hopeful that it was going to eat it but it didn't. Um, I'm not sure maybe they just have to eat much smaller worms or maybe they eat worms you know that are sort of close to dying or have already died. I'm not sure but I haven't managed to see one actually devour a worm yet. From what I've read the process of them eating a worm is actually quite interesting. They line themselves up with the worm and then something protrudes from the middle of the flatworm and exudes a liquid and that's basically like digestive juices and then it's able to suck up the dissolved worm. So you can probably understand why I really wanted to see that process. These flatworms have been recorded for a very long time, since the 80s I think in the UK and they came in originally from Australia in plants and they've now basically established themselves in many, many different locations around the UK. I decided to keep these few for a while just so that I could watch their behaviours. But I suppose if you find any of these in the wild, they should really be disposed of. Um, so they're not a threat to our native earthworms. This is another bit of footage that I took where I was convinced that maybe the uh, flatworm was starting to get a little bit interested in the earthworm and might actually devour it. You can see it looks like it's sort of wrapping itself around that earthworm, but um, in the end it just slithers off. That was hugely disappointing for me because all I wanted to do was see them nice and well fed and uh, maybe even breed them in this uh, container that I've set up. In this next bit of footage, you can see the flatworm on the right is really squashed up. It looks a lot wider and a lot shorter and then you can see the other two on the left are a bit more stretched out. They look a lot thinner, a lot more worm-like, whereas the first one looks a bit more like a sort of a slug or something. Although these are an invasive species and a threat to our native earthworms, they're still a fascinating species. Um, very interesting invertebrate because of just the way they move. So I'm still fascinated by them and I don't mind uh, keeping a few in captivity just to watch their behaviours and potentially breed them. Obviously if you happen to come across some and you want to do the same you've just got to make sure that if you are keeping them you keep them in an escape proof cage and make sure that they don't get back into the wild. So I made sure that I collected a whole load of moss and leaf litter from the exact location where I found the flatworms because then I know that uh, they're being surrounded by things that they're actually happy with already. They are a very light, shy species, so whenever you reveal them, they're constantly trying to bury down back into the darkness. So you can see here how I set them up is with lots of moss, lots of leaf litter and bits of thin bark. And I think they like to wedge themselves in between like leaves or thin bits of bark. So this is the top part of the lid and you can see there's a very fine mesh on there so they're not able to get through it. I've also put lots of this tape on as well to keep the humidity up and a cable tie to keep the lid nice and secure. You can see there's lots of condensation on the insides of the tub and I've sprayed it quite heavily so there's drops of moisture on the top as well. 
what they like doing as you can see is um, crawling up the sides and onto the lid and as long as it's nice and humid and damp they can do that if it was too dry they wouldn't bother I'm assuming that these are hermaphrodite like true worms and slugs and snails meaning that they've got both male and female parts and that means that you can breed basically any two individuals together as long as they are at breeding age obviously okay it's always fun to look under logs and things when you're out and about just make sure you put the logs back afterwards but you never know what you're going to find um, I on this particular occasion was not expecting to find uh, Australian flatworms so it, it was an interesting surprise um, okay I hope you've enjoyed this video check out my other videos of um, UK nature walks and that kind of thing I'm really interested in reptiles and amphibians and I breed quite a lot so check out those videos as well if you get a chance hit subscribe to see any videos that I post up in the future thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video